Farmer Jason here at Wave Fruit Farm. Today we're picking apples. Now the other day, if you guys watched my video, you might have even been a little jealous of us or definitely there might have been some envy there because we were outside doing this task on a beautiful sunny mid 70s October day. Well, it is no longer that day and it's gotten pretty awful outside. Um, today we're here. We're still, we're actually in a different orchard than when we were the other day. We're still late October. You can see the mountain behind me is all in color. And the apples, we're getting towards the end of the apple season. But it's been awful weather. Uh, yesterday was even worse than today. And actually even just a few minutes ago, we had on our raincoats. Uh, it's been sprinkling, drizzling, mid 40s, low 50s. And it's been cold and miserable. We're wearing gloves, we're wearing raincoats, and it's not all that much fun. But we need to get done because of the fact that we are going to run out of time. The weather forecast for this coming Friday into Saturday takes us down to 25 degrees, which is cold enough it might freeze some of our apples. So we are full steam ahead trying to pick these apples, which are Ida Red apples. Um, very pretty apple. Uh, these ones are a little bit tartar. Really good for baking. Um, good for tart eating, but also really good for baking. And so we've had quite a few of them. We're getting quite a few off of here. Um, Fidel and Pablo are here picking away at our tree. And I'm gonna show you the little bit of difference between these and picking peaches. Um, with peaches, we did a video and we showed how we go through and we selectively pick. But whenever we do the, whenever we do the apples, we pick everything on the tree unless we forget one down here at the bottom and so we'll grab that one for them and so we've been picking at these trees this is a whole row is full of ida reds and you can see it goes a long ways back there and all of these are cleaned off we've already been through here we've already picked these apples and now we're moving on we just keep going down the row until we're done we still have a ways to go as I said, we're in a bit of a hurry with it today because I am a little afraid that they might freeze. And you can see the whole wagon full of apples. And I'm going to show you how we drive that down will be the next thing I do. And so we're going to move this one out of the way. And I have another tractor sitting here. So this is our full wagon. And I have another tractor sitting here ready to go that have a whole bunch of these empty. So the first thing I want to explain is sort of how we do it. So we have this tractor, we have the tractor with the wagon, we have five bins on here. What this will hold is 115 bushels worth of apples. Each one of these bins is, um, each one of these bins is 23 bushels. And you can see we have our name on the bin as well as the date that we bought the bins. So these bins are from 2013. So we've been using them several years. We wash them each season. We make sure they're nice and clean. Uh, they're just a big plastic bin that's actually made out of recycled water bottles is what the original part of these is from. And so we will fill all of these up and then we'll take them down. And so I'll show you that process. What I'm gonna show you first once I move this up is I'll show you how we pick the apples. It's not too complicated, much less complicated than the peaches, but a little bit harder work physically. So. That's what I'll show you next, and so we're going to move tractors. All right, Fidel's pulling that one forward. Everybody's waiting on us, so we'll get moving forward here too. So Fidel's just going to move that out of the way for now, and then we'll take it down here in a second. And so you can see the bin behind me falling up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get up far enough that that last bin is right where they're picking. And so perfect, right there. And so we just pull it up and we keep moving the wagon up as we pick. Um, other orchards, some other orchards, what they do is they'll put the bins actually in the orchard on the floor. I don't find that as efficient. I like doing it this way where we can just keep moving the bit, moving the tractors. Cause like back in the first section of trees back there, we've already picked, there were a lot more apples than here. So you have to judge and sometimes you have to walk along with your bin. So we just like having them on the tractors and we just like moving it with it. So I'm gonna show you next how we pick apples. 
All right, so what we use to pick apples, unlike the peaches where we picked them in crates, apples we pick a little differently. We want to be a little faster with it. They're a little bit more hardy than the way we pick our peaches. So the innovation, if you will, um, be it not a new innovation by any stretch, but the innovation that we have is our picking bag. Um, this is the latest, greatest version of it. Uh, and what we do is the apples are gonna go inside here. And then I'll show you how we use this to get down in. So there's a poly plastic body on it here that makes it a little bit more comfortable. We used to have wire mesh ones that would be across here. And the problem that I especially have with the wire mesh ones is they would dig into your abdomen. and By the end of the day, you'd feel where those bars went across. So this one's fully molded and a little bit more comfortable. So I'm gonna strap the camera on and I'll show you how we use the bag. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm here at the tree and I have a whole tree full of apples ahead of me. My bag is empty except for two little ones I already threw in. And so what we're gonna get in here is we're just gonna get into the tree and we're gonna start picking. I like to start at the bottom to make sure that we don't have any that we knock off with our legs, as well as if we drop anything from above, the ones that fall from above will bruise the lower ones. And so we wanna pick off the bottom of the tree. I'm down here on my knee, picking all of these off. And then we'll stand up once we get all these bottom ones done. Now, there are tricks to picking apples. It's not just grow, grab and pull and throw. What we wanna do is we wanna take the apple, we wanna take it, we wanna spin it, and it should fall right off. Now, when I'm putting them in my bag, I don't wanna drop them, I wanna set them down. If you treat the apple too rough, you'll bruise it. And so we wanna get in there with a nice motion, kinda of crack the apple off, Make sure we always have the other one on the backside. These ones are not super tight. They've been hanging on the tree for a while, waiting for me to get here, as well as I want them to get a little more size. So we're, we're, they're not super hardy on the tree, so I don't have to pull real hard. But like one of the things I don't wanna do is I don't wanna pull two at once. I don't wanna pull them together because what will happen is I'll bruise them. So one at a time, pull it off, sometimes the little branches come. We pop them off too and I set them in my bag. So I just keep repeating this process until I have a bag full. My bag's about half full right now. And so we just keep doing this process. I gotta get all these off. There one fell on the ground. You're gonna see some apples on the ground. That's part of it, you try not to have any fall, but sometimes they do. Again, twisting with the wrist, I kind of give them a little snap with the wrist, and that makes them come off easy. If you just try pulling, sometimes they can hold on there pretty good. So what you want to do is you want to give the wrist a little bit of a twist. And so when I'm in here, I want to give it a little bit of a twist, and that'll make it come right off the tree. If you just try pulling, a lot of times they won't come off. And again, one at a time, and into the basket. Not pulling multiples when you get a big one like that. Make sure the other ones are okay. And pull. A little twist, a little twist, a little twist with the wrist. Twist, pop, twist, twist, pull, twist, twist, twist. Now, I have my bag full of apples, which is where I wanna be. Nice and full, this is a little bit less than a bushel. Now, we come over to those bins. And I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna drop it down in here. And then this bag has straps and the bottom opens up and everything comes out. And I wanna try to do it nice and gentle so I don't bruise them going in there. And see, now you can see right down through the bag. And so all the apples have come out the bottom side and it allows us to do it much quicker much more efficiently, and then whenever I'm done, I just hook them back in, and I go back, and I start all over again. So that's how we pick apples. And as you can see, we have a lot of apples to pick yet. This row has hundreds of trees in it. Each tree has all these apples, and so it takes a while. Uh, you can see there are a few on the ground, not a lot, but if I walk over to these, 
you can see this variety, this was my Macallans and I was trying to let them get sized and we picked these a while ago, but you can see just how many are on the ground. And you know, sometimes that just happens in apple farming where if you don't get to them fast enough, um, this orchard was very dry. And so I ended up having a lot of smaller apples. So I was trying to give them some extra time to grow and they're just falling. And you know, and this is part of the problem with farming too, is it can be very hard. I'm gonna walk over here I have our stamens, and I do have some followers of stamens. They're falling on the ground, but they're all so tiny. You know, they're barely bin sale size. They're not really all that good of a size. And so I've been trying to let them grow, and, and instead they're falling on the ground instead of growing. The, this orchard, we're up here on top of the mountain, and every orchard has its own characteristics, sort of like every every house, every person, every yard, like parts of your yard might grow better. This orchard up here, when it's wet, it's really wet. When it's dry, it's really dry. And so the problem we've had is just, this orchard was drier and the stuff didn't grow as good, but it still is very good. It's a good apple. It just needs to grow a little bit more. All right, so we're just... All right, so now we've got to get out of this orchard, you can see we're up here all the way to the top of the mountain, which is nowhere near our store. So we're gonna take this full tractor that we had pulled forward earlier, and we're gonna head down. And we're gonna unload these with our forklift, and then we'll get them into the cooler um, probably tomorrow morning, as I showed in the previous video. We like to let them sit out overnight, even though it's not very warm today. They'll still do a little bit more additional cooling tonight. And um, that way, whenever we put them in the cooler, they don't require as much energy. So we're gonna hop up in our new Holland tractor here. It's a little dirty from being used so hard this fall. And so we're gonna start it up. It actually has an air ride seat, so we're gonna put a little air into our seat. Uh, all right, we're gonna get in the right gear. I wanna be in 2-2, which is fast, but not too fast. And then what I like to do too, I don't know, I find like when I'm in a tractor, I like to listen to country music. I don't know. It's just one of those things that seems to be the way that life seems to go is country seems to work the best. And we'll turn on our local 101 Froggy. Boss Frog is a friend of the farm, he, regular customer and a friend of ours. And so we'll listen to Froggy here on our way down. And, Part of with a tractor is nothing is fast. You know, we're gonna bump along here at not too high of a rate of speed because then what will happen is all of those apples that are following me will get bounced too much. And you can see the wagon even flexes a little bit. And so we're just gonna keep going down through here at a nice gentle speed. I'm bringing us back out of the fast forward here for our last little bit you can see just how crooked sometimes the trailer gets going across these hillsides and sometimes the back of it will actually start to slide um, we're actually sitting pretty crooked right now I'm actually having to use my leg to brace to keep me from sliding and there you can see the tractor the trailer really leans but because of its low center of gravity it doesn't roll over and you can see down here we still have lots of apples um, what we're doing those were these apples down on this side, it was drier. And also for some reason the frost seemed to settle in this corner. So there's not as many apples down in this corner as there are in some of the other locations. And so when we get down here, it won't take us as long to pick. Now the tricky part with driving this tractor is we don't leave ourselves a whole lot of room. You can see I'm coming to the end of the trees, but the fence row isn't that far in front of me. So what we have to do is we have to hang really close to this side and we have to get right up to the fence. We have to turn hard because that trailer's gotta follow us. And if we cut too sh sharp, we will hit that tree. And so we missed it. So now we'll bump up through here and I'm in range two. What I'm gonna do is before we hit the main road here, I'll shift up into range three so that I can go a little bit faster on the main roads. And so we're coming up here towards our gate in the orchard. 
each apple that we pick has to go this way, be it in that orchard over there. Um, that's, we've already picked that. Or we have an orchard way over there by those towers. That's where we shot the last video. So we're all the way on the other side. Uh, we still have some goldens to pick there, as you can see. And there are our blueberries that are netted up there. All right, now same thing when we come to the gate here. We've got to swing it wide. So whenever we come down, we miss dragging the trailer into that gate. All right, we're gonna stop so we can shift up the third range and we're gonna head on down the road. It took us about 10 minutes uh, in the fast forward there to get from the orchard down to here. We're pulling in, and this is one of my favorite moves, is I come in here and it shows you just how well this wagon turns. I mean, we have this big wagon, and it looks like I'm heading straight for the bins. It's gonna be catastrophe. And instead, what happens is I spin my front end, and I spin right in a circle, and the wagon follows me right around. And this way, I don't have real far to go with my forklift. I can unload it right where we need it. And then the forklift is sort of a fun venture. Oh, let me turn off my four ways. So the forklift unloading this is kind of fun too. And so I'm gonna keep you guys with me while I do that. You can see apples made it down here, no harm. A few high ones, we'll move them. This last bin, just the bouncing coming down always settles it out. There's one apple that doesn't deserve to go. We'll throw it away. And so the back bin settles a little bit. You can see how it settled down when we started out. This one was full. But lots of nice red apples, um, you know, doing real good. So these are ones we've already picked. Um, setting them outside here as we did in our previous video. I'll put all that away in the morning. So we'll head inside and we'll grab our forklift. a little bit sideways first and that way I can get right underneath it. And I have a single one sitting over there so we're gonna put it on top of that one. And again these plastic ones are nice because they kind of settle into each other right like that. Whoop, nope didn't quite get it right. Gotta get it in there. There we go. Again, we'll stack them. Oop, not quite on that side if you can see, and so I'll drag it back and drop it in. When you drive a forklift, you sort of have to be aware of your surroundings because 
I do a lot of backing up. And so I've got to make sure there's nothing behind me to hit as I do that. Two more bins and then we'll put empty ones back on. Now this next bin, this one right over here, is the trickiest bin of them all because it's tucked back in there. If I just try to go straight into that one, I'm going to hit the wheel. So what I've got to do is I've got to take that bin and I've got to give it a little pull. I tuck one fork in over there and turn sideways and I pull the bin over. And now what I can do is without putting a hole in my wheel, I can go and I can grab that one and we're all good. farm bins here. We're going to drop the first one on there. Pick it off. swing around. We're going to drop the second one on here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my forks and I'm going to shove it back into the hole. And that way we can grab three more bins off our stack. We can grab three more of these. We're going to bring them down. We're going to set them on the trailer. successfully loaded and unloaded a trailer just that fast and now we're back in the business. So that's what we do and that's how we get her done and that's what that's how we end up with a nice big stack of lots of beautiful apples. What we're picking right now is as I said the Ida Reds and then over there, if you can see, are some goldens we picked before we switched over to the Ida Reds. And so now we'll hop back in the tractor and we'll head back up and we'll keep picking. I did this fast forward through the long rows. You can see just how long these rows are. They measure almost a half mile from one side to the other and every foot of them is filled with apples. Now again, we're at the end here of the Honeycrisp is actually what those new little trees are. 
is they are Honeycrisp trees. And so we're gonna have a lot of Honeycrisp for a long time to come because I planted a lot of trees. Now, same thing when we do these ends, we've got to swing out all the way into these trees to make sure that as we swing into this row, over all the bumps, oh, try not to hit the tree. And we gotta pull our wagon in, because if we don't, it'll hit the other tree. So that's the game we're playing. And off we go. Now these are the same Ida Red trees that we've been picking, these are just empty. So, back to the starting spot that we left with a full wagon with an empty wagon. Uh, this is what we keep doing, and we've been doing it since late August, it's late October. We're all getting done with it, but it's just how harvest goes. And we're happy that it's almost over. Hopefully, hopefully we don't get too cold on Friday into Saturday to where it's over a little bit earlier than what I want it to be. I still have a, about five days worth of picking to go. So um, now, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you follow us on Facebook. Uh, we'd love to have you as regular followers of these videos. Uh, we enjoy doing them. We've had a great time doing them. Even though 2020 has been a hard year with all the pandemic and everything that's going on, we've enjoyed doing these videos. It's allowed us to connect with you guys, and I think that's very, very important. And we've, we've been doing them since the beginning. If you want to see any, we have a bunch of these that have been done, uh, and you can always go back and watch all of the previous ones. We've done a lot of different things over the last year since we started this. So we thank you all for following us. We've had a great time. Follow us on Facebook and um, you know, come visit us at the store and grab yourself some apples. Have a great day. Thank you all.